Okay, so what's wrong with pseudoscience? What's what's wrong with just you know buying into a great idea? I mean, what's the difference? One of the things is sometimes um, people will turn to pseudoscience at a time when they really need actual help, when they really do need you know scientifically established treatments or assistance. Um, that really and instead they waste their energy chasing around these treatments that are not effective. Um, look at the whole autism is caused by immunizations. Look at the way that this author wrote this. He's from the ageofautism.com and he says, does the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine cause autism? I vote yes. Uh, science isn't usually a democracy, so vote, your vote really doesn't count, but okay. Of course, that's just one man's opinion. But one who's spent the last three years listening to parents and enlightened pediatricians, knows that enlightened pediatricians, and combing through adverse events reports and just generally trying to think for himself. See what I meant by pseudoscientists will oftentimes tell you that scientific method isn't necessary, that those of you who are following the scientific interpretation have really just drunk the Kool-Aid, right? You're not one of the enlightened pediatricians. Right? You're one of the ones who's just buying the party line that the AMA just keeps trying to shove down our throats. Right? Um, when we're busy getting all wound up about immunizations, it takes our energy away from things that we could be doing. Treatments that might actually help to reduce the effects of autism. Treatments of, um, you know, uh, advice that might actually reduce the likelihood that one's child might develop autism. Um, there really aren't very many things that, there are a few things that have been tied to autism. There aren't very many things that account for much of the variance between people with regard to autism. But the one thing that seems to be the best predictor of whether a child will develop autism or not is whether his or her parents were, if it's the dad, older than 40, if it's the mom, older than 35. That's the best predictor that we have. It's not perfect absolutely not perfect at all. A lot of healthy children born to parents who were over 35 and over 40. But it's the best predictor. Now, should we ban over 35 and over 40 like they wanted to ban immunizations? No, absolutely not. <laughs> because we don't know what causes autism. Um, so we certainly should not be banning certain behaviors, right? How about ca cancer treatments? Um, you guys might have heard of when Steve Jobs got diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, he had a slow growing type, but he spent a lot of time pursuing alternative treatments rather than getting treated with things that were known to be effective. Um, let me show you this alternativecancer.us because this is first off, you, we just have to enjoy the credibility of this web page, right? Nothing, nothing wrong with this page at all. Completely screams, I trust you. Okay. Um, here's my uh, favorite thing, um, approaching friends and relatives with alternative information. It's difficult to convince someone verbally that their doctor does not have the best medicine. Written information is usually more convincing than conversation. However, giving a patient a long printout and saying, read this, can seem dismissive. Consider this approach instead. Show your friend or relative that, that conventional medicine is not the only type of viable medicine. It is simply the only type that conventional doctors can prescribe. Print out the printer-friendly version of what happened to good medicine. It's only four pages. Print in color if you can, because nothing says credibility like lots of color. Um, the last page contains the color-coded comparison table. Demonstrate your desire to actively participate and show their use of alternative treatments and support their use of alternative treatments. Do something active, such as taking them to a presentation on any type of alternative medicine just to show that it is a thriving practice. And then we go down to destroying belief. If you had a friend or loved one read the conventional treatments page, they will learn. Operations and chemo spread cancer. Radiation causes cancer, which technically is true, <laughs> but it's not true in the way that they use it. Chemo interferes with alternative cancer treatments. So what they're um, going to tell us is that we need to put our energy into the alternative treatments first. If you try chemo first and it and then turn to alternatives because the chemo is not working, then the alternatives aren't going to work either because you ruined it by using chemo first rather than what the truth is, which is if you have a type of cancer that's so resistant to treatment that it didn't 
it, it wasn't controlled by chemo, our alternative stuff isn't going to work either. Um, so it can take you, going the dangerous side effect route first does not make sense. So they're trying to convince people that they'll actually harm themselves if they do the standard of care, the things that have been documented. Conventional treatment have a very low success rate. Um, really? <laughs> okay, well there's really nothing to say about that. Um, that's classic, classic pseudoscience on that web page, telling us that you've got to be a believer. If you don't believe, you're actually going to make yourself sicker. It's like your fault if it doesn't work. I mean, what a horrible web page. Another th thing that's wrong with pseudoscience is that it discredits legitimate science because people start to come to the conclusion that all science is pseudoscience, that all scientists are doing junk science that has a motive. I just had a colleague of mine who has a PhD in psychology say to me that researchers in psychology who are studying gender differences and, and um, sexual orientation, other kinds of things, are uh, not finding what she thinks they should find because they're biased, because all scientists are biased. Okay, she was trained in how to do science and has still come to the conclusion that all scientists are junk scientists, that they all have a motive and that they're only going to report those results that support their pre-existing beliefs. That, I mean, that's serious when even people who have been trained in the field have started to buy into the pseudoscientific and junk scientific um, mindset. Um, just because you have funding, we're going to question you. I mean, legitimate science has funding. Here we have uh, this guy from junkscience.com, and he's talking about pharmaceutical funding. And I truncated this report quite a bit just to make it um, have it have the parts that I wanted. So all those dot dot dots, I did that. <laughs> I took stuff out. So Dr. Topol's recommendation that the statin taking population should be tripled. So what Dr. Topol had reported is that um, people whose blood pressure is lower than the previous cutoff so they had been falling into the healthy range, would benefit from taking statin drugs to, to um, keep them from having a heart attack. The New, Journal, the New England Journal of, of Medicine opted not to disclose that his, Dr. Topol's, employer receives financial support from Pfizer and Bristol-Myers. His expertise and reputation combined with the fact that their support for the employer doesn't involve statins was the rationale for not disclosing the political conflict of interest. Okay, I'm actually less impressed with his expertise and reputa reputation. I mean, I mean, yeah, a lot of famous scientists have gotten to be famous without being necessarily ethical or, or great scientists. But the fact that the Pfizer and Bristol-Myers support for the clinic where Dr. Topol works does not involve support for research on statins means that by definition Dr. Topol did not receive support from Pfizer or Bristol-Myers to do his research on statins. Yet this junk science website is trying to sow the seeds of concern where they probably don't belong just because he has funding from some sort of pharmaceutical tie does not necessarily mean that his results are always going to benefit the pharmaceutical companies. That's what's wrong with pseudoscience. That's what's wrong with junk science is that it makes us all suspicious of every single scientist to the point where we don't know who to trust. We don't know what research is reliable or uh, credible or meaningful. Um, so that's a significant problem with pseudoscience. It makes all of us look bad. Okay, let's go ahead and take a little break and we'll come back and talk about why we love pseudoscience so much as humans. <laughs>